having me. I'm actually coming at you today from uh, from Switzerland. I have a, a deep here and then a snowy snowy Alps, and it's it's evening here, so it's uh, it's 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 snowing, and I can see down onto the the village. It's it's uh, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm here for a couple of weeks, ran ran at the cabin for some skiing and snowboarding. Just needed to share that. <laughs> I feel like it's so beautiful. I needed to just uh, share that with everyone. Uh, anyway, guys, my name is Serge Berger, as Travis was saying, and uh, I teach traders and investors to reach a level of consistent profitability that they never thought possible. Did you know that the reason why most traders are not making money is because they overcomplicate things? That's it. Most traders make things much too complicated. So what today I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a highly profitable three-prong trading approach that has not only made me a ton of money over the years, but it has also already allowed hundreds of traders just like you to live a life of financial freedom by reaching consistent profitability. How would you like to be able to get up in the morning and not care which direction the market is heading because you know you have a simple, trustworthy, and most importantly, a repeatable process that consistently keeps you on the right side of the market. Furthermore, how would you like to be able to do this from your beachside hotel room in Hawaii or your slope side of the room here in the Alps. Well, that's actually a very realistic life. Uh, I, in fact, do exactly just that. If you learn to follow this straightforward three product trading approach that I'm going to show you guys today. Financial freedom is what many traders aspire to, and I think my three product trading approach uh, has certainly allowed me to live a wonderful lifestyle where I spend uh, part of the year in Florida and actually the other part also in Switzerland. Success as a trader really is not that difficult and with the approach I'm going to show you guys today, I know that everyone can do this. So what we're going to talk about today is the one candlestick pattern that's going to literally change your game. Uh, in terms of myself, just a quick overview, I've been very fortunate uh, during my career to work both on the sell side of JP Morgan and then on the buy side of various outfits, hedge funds, and family offices, and it's allowed me to see both sides of the market and how, how not only you know different asset classes, equities, fixed income, and currencies, but also really how some of the best traders and investors make money in the market, and um, I am now fortunate enough to be able to pass this knowledge on to my direct investors that I manage money for, and of course my uh, advisory clients and uh, newsletter clients and the broader audience as such. So I'm excited to share this with you guys here as well. All right. My big thing is is keeping it simple. I think, as I said before, trading and investing does not have to be very complicated and that most traders and investors dramatically overcomplicate things. In fact, most investors look at way too many conflicting data points and what that does is it basically confuses them. What you have to do is eliminate the noise. So the more straightforward your process is, the easier it is going to be for you to actually be able to stick with it. Right? I'm going to repeat that. The more straightforward your process is, the easier it is for you to actually stick with something that works and that's repeatable. Okay? Really, really important stuff. Now, Many traders and, 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 and investors that I know that work for hedge funds and uh, investment banks only actually focus on a handful of stocks, and, but they get really, really good at those stocks, right? And, and, and whether those, maybe they're, if they're focusing on, on a commodity or whatever it is, they're really only focusing on a couple of stocks or even a couple of bonds, right? So the question then is if, if those professional traders only focus on a few stocks, why is the average, you know, let's call it amateur investor, trying to be a jack of all trades? The key to success in this business is to to be to focus actually just on one or two strategies, or, or at least just a couple of two three strategies most, but get really really good at those. And that's also what the best investors I've met throughout my career, both on the sell side and the buy side, actually do. They focus on a, on a couple of strategies or a couple of setups, so to speak. And, um, and they get really, really good at those. The best professional traders have a very simple but a repeatable process. That's been what I found out through my nearly 20-year career. 
Um, institutional traders have a simple repeatable process, as I just said, and so what I'm going to show you guys today is a highly effective repeatable three-pronged trading process. All right? Everyone can do this, and I firmly believe that once you look at this, it's literally going to change the way that you look at the financial markets. All right? So before we do that, though, real quick, I want to just do this exercise, just going to take a minute, where I find that it's always important for, for investors and traders to always reevaluate where they are and be honest with themselves in terms of, of, of where they are and, and what they could learn. And that goes for life itself as, as well, of course. So, and you can answer this question yourself if you want to type it in. I see some people type it in. It's good, um, the answer. But I find that, you know, a lot of people, uh, if they're at the beginning stage, they're just reading and studying, they've actually done a trade. So that would be, you know, you're being the beginning stage. If you are, uh, have been doing this for a couple of years, but you're still not really sure what you're doing. You're going through the initial emotions. You might be in stage number two. And I see a lot of guys are responding here. And I see a lot of people coming up with stage three. And it makes a lot of sense, guys. If you, the, good, the good news, if you are in stage three, and you may, you may still be losing money, but you may, you may you, well, let me put it this way. You may not be necessarily losing money. You may, you may not be making as much money as you make. And, and, and there's actually a fine line between those things, right? It doesn't really, almost doesn't matter. You're just not yet happy. The good th news is if you're in stage three, as most people probably are that are in this webinar, and, and I can see that is the case. I have a couple of stage one and two, and that's great. But if you are in stage three, the good news is that you've come, you've stuck it out until now, and you're closer than ever to actually making it work. All right, so let's get right to it, to the meat of the presentation. While outside the snow is falling here, it's so beautiful. I wish I could show you guys a picture with you guys here in the Swiss Alps. It is so beautiful. In terms of the agenda, real quick, just so you guys know what, what to expect, <clears throat> what I'm going to explain to you is why I, why identifying investor mood or emotions is critical to success as a trader and an investor. I'm going to show you guys over the next 40 uh, minutes or so, I'm going to show you how to consistently find the highest uh, probability points to buy any given stock, index, commodity, or currency. I'm going to then tie all this together and give you guys the blueprint to an amazing three-prong trading and after investing approach. And then as a bonus, I'm going to reveal my absolute favorite option strategy that you guys can implement right away to generate monthly income. All right, so I hope you're excited. Let's do this. Okay, so before we get started, uh, or actually get started, I should say, I want to make sure that you guys know I'm not going to go through a Candlesticks 101 approach. That's not what this is. But I'm going to give you guys a, a real quick base in case no one has ever heard of, of what this what this is. Um, there are basically too many Candlesticks out there to learn them all. I only use the most profitable ones. Shocking, right? Uh, a lot of folks make a big deal of all these different candlestick patterns. The reality is that only a few of them actually work, and, and a few of them actually only only a few of them actually show up all the time. So, what we need to look at here is a basic understanding of a candlestick. Essentially, on the on the right on the left hand side here, you have what we call a down day. You have an open up here. You can see my cursor. A close low lower, but an intraday range. And these are, I'm going to use I'm going to use these as daily bars, right? They could be weekly bars, five minute bars. They could be whatever you want. I'm going to use a daily approach. Um, so you have a, a down day, an open, a lower close, but an intraday range that extended beyond the open and below the close. The opposite, of course, would be, would be an up day where you have an, an open, a higher close, and an intraday range that extended beyond um, the open and close. So that's the real basic of a candle. What's really important is that we understand that there's really a four, uh, a, a relationship between the, the high, the low, the daily close and the daily open. That's important to understand. I'm gonna show you guys right now why that's so important and I'm gonna show you a much different way of looking at this than what most people do, okay? The good news is that 60% of people have a much easier time of learning things through a series of, of, of pictures, right? Um, so, you know, that makes sense. And in fact, you know, if I look at my, uh, our young daughter, she of course has a much easier time understanding stuff if I show her a series of pictures as well. So <clears throat> that's the thing about candlesticks. They are extremely, extremely visual. They're much more visual than bar or line charts. If you are using, if for some reason, and I'm, per, I'm pretty sure no one is, but if you're using line charts, like just basic squiggly lines for, for your active trading or investing in trading, um, you're going to get a lot out of this webinar because you can understand that those really don't give you much information. But the candlesticks give you a real clear visual representation of what's going on. And here's the biggie, guys. Write this down. What, in, what candlesticks do 
they display price action first and foremost, obviously, but much more importantly, they give us they give us a clue of what investor emotions or investor sentiment is, and literally gives us footprints of of what these investors are doing. All right, write that down. That's really really important. Candlesticks give us a picture of what investor emotion is, and that's the most important thing in active investing and trading. I've learned that over the past 20 years or nearly of my career, both on the investment banking side, the sell side, and the buy side, and that's really what it's all about. Now, a little bit more on this before we go into the meet and look at the charts. Um, the good thing about candlesticks is, where one of the great things is that they're easy to spot once you uh, you have you trained your eyes, and it's not difficult at all to do so. It's all about decision making without emotions, right? There's very defined risk, clear stops, and that's all you can hope for, right? Now, the reason I chose this picture of this person on this big cliff is because it really very much represents what a high probability active investing and trading approach looks like using candlesticks as one of your tools, as I'm gonna show you guys. This person has very, very defined risk. There's sort of a point of no return. It's the same thing with candlesticks. There's a, a point where we can, without hesitation, set our stops and know that's where we will be wrong. Just like this guy, you know? He knows exactly where he needs to stop and turn around. It's the same thing with candlesticks. And that is extremely, extremely powerful, okay? So, let's look at this. We have uh, here, one thing is, I'm going to show you guys two types of, of candles because they really are the most important ones and, and through 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 the most through the lens of investor psychology and they'll they'll show up in various formations throughout uh, the weeks, the, the the days and and uh, the months in the year. The hammer candle, okay? It doesn't matter whether we're looking at a down day or an up day. We'll just look at the example up here. So essentially, what you had here is you had uh, a open here, then you had an intraday push all the way down here. Right, and then something happened. The stock rallied all the way back to actually close a little bit higher on the day. All right. Now, through the lens of of, of price action, we'd say, okay, well, that's nice. You know, the the the, the stock managed to recover its intraday highs, uh, lows. If you look, if you listen to CNBC, the guys on CNBC would say, uh, we're off the lows. Back to you. <laughs> and and so that's nice, but it really doesn't tell us much. Now. I want you to think about it a different way. Think about the lens of investor psychology. What actually took place? And that's how, what the pros do, guys. I'm telling you, this is what we did at JP Morgan. It's what we did at the hedge funds and family office I've worked at, and that's what, how I manage money now. The market essentially pushed lower intraday, but something happened down here. It doesn't really matter what it was, but essentially the bears essentially uh, lost lost the ball, right? They lost the control of the game. The bulls quickly took over. So the, the bulls basically got washed out and the bears had reached maximum bearishness. And when that happens, there's only one way to go and that's higher, right? So that's telling you that there's the sellers basically exhausted themselves down there, right? So the bulls took over. Think about that, okay? And you'll see this in the examples I'm gonna show you. The other example I'm gonna show you guys before we look at the charts here in a minute is Essentially, we call it an engulfing day. All right, and I'm just going to look at the example here. This is the this is sort of a bearish uh, example. Oh, actually, let, let, let's look at this example here. So what happens is we had an, a, a, an extended downtrend, right? And what happened is we had this day here where the, the market kind of just shuffled back and forth, but then we came into the next day. And on this day here, the market opened a little bit lower, as you can see, but then something happened. And the bulls quickly push the, the 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 market higher. Now again, through the lens of price action, what does it tell us? Well, it tells us, you know, okay, we had an up day, and you know, we made good yesterday's losses. Through the lens of investor psychology, what you what you're looking at here is basically something that's telling you, well, listen, the bears completely lost the uh, lost control of the ball. They exhausted themselves, and the bulls quickly pushed the market higher so much that it completely engulfed previous days open to close range, the body of the candle, right? Very, very important. I hope you guys are starting to see what I'm getting at here, and you'll see this in the charts here just in just a second, all right? I'm going to skip these two slides here in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the interest of time. Let's just go right to the example because that's what you're here for. I'm going to quickly go through a couple bullet points. We're going to look at this chart here. I'm going to blow it up and make it larger. So don't type anything into the question box. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to make this chart large in just a second, all right? What we had here is that we have the S&P 500. This is October 2014. We had um, exhaustion selling followed by a strong bullish reversal. Actually, we had a waterfall sell-off first, which was followed by exhaustion selling and then strong bullish reversal, right? Ultimately, we had a bullish continuation a day, 
right? Let's look at this close up. This is October 2014. That's a lot of times how trading bottoms or active investing bottoms, swing trading, whatever you want to call it, multi-day, multi-week, multi-month bottoms are made. And those are the, that's where you generate alpha as an active investor and trader and quite frankly also as a long-term investor, right? That's just the bottom line. So what happened? We had the S&P 500 push all the way down. What happened? We had two long exhausting candles. I think it was like October 15th or 16th or something like that in 2014. And you can see after a strong waterfall sell-off, at some point the, the bears really tried to push this market lower again on this day, but they for some reason couldn't push it, keep it lower, and they exhausted themselves. The bulls had completely capitulated, so there was only one way to go, and that's higher. It happened one more time the next day, and then we had a follow-through buying day. Okay, I honestly can't tell you guys how powerful this is, but this this is very capturing alpha, right? And a follow-through buying day after the bears exhausted themselves and the bulls completely capitulated is where you buy stocks, commodities, whatever. All right, that's where your highest probability of a trade takes place. Let's go right to the next example. This is the KBW Bank Index, and in case you don't follow this one, it's a really good one to follow. Okay, so what do we have? We had a bottoming, I'll, again, I'll blow up this chart a little bit larger in just a second. We had a bottoming process take place, followed by exhaustion selling and a strong bullish reversal and ultimately bullish continuation buying. Very straightforward. Let's look at this chart a little bit more close up. Look what happened. Waterfall sell-off. This actually was just last October, guys. All right. Waterfall sell-off last August. Then we had a, a, a um, basically a bottom information take place, but ultimately came into this day. It was one of the first few trading days of October. And look what happened. The bears really, really tried to push this market lower, but on an intraday basis, quickly the bear, the bulls took took back over the game. The next day we had a follow-through buying day, and it was off to the races. All right. Again, through the lens of price action, you say, "Man, that's nice." You know, the the, the bulls, you know, the, the bears, or the we had a, we had a, an, we came off the lows, we closed off the lows again as, as C, in CNBC terms. But what really happened is that the bears really tried their best to push this market below the August lows, miserably failed at that. There was only one way to go, and that's higher. So peak bearishness is exactly what this represents. Look. Guys, look at the markets through the lens of investor psychology and investor emotions, and I can guarantee you, you will start being much a much more selective in your trades and your investments, and b you'll have much less emotions in getting in and out of it, out of your trades and active investments. Okay, that's that's the point of this presentation. So let's look at one more. This is a bearish example, so this works in both sides, of course. Um, so look at this is the the GLD the, the Gold Trust ETF. Again, I'll blow up this chart a little bit closer in just a second. So we had a topping process uh, take place in this case, then followed by uh, basically exhaustion buying, I should say. This should say exhaustion buying, and then a strong bearish reversal and ultimately follow through selling. Okay, let's look at this. So the GLD, we had a rally up here uh, in in the August uh, period through October, and then what happened? We had a strong bearish reversal day take place on this day. Now, what's important is that you know you look at this through the lens of investor psychology. On this very day here, this was one of the last trading days of October, of just this past October, you can see the market, the gold, the GLD actually topped out in October. But in one of the first few trading days of, no, of November, I guess it was the first few trading days of November or one of the last of, of October, doesn't matter. The GLD tried to really, really, really try to, to, to rally on this day, but on an intraday basis, the bulls completely lost control of the ball of the game and the bears quickly took over. So bulls, the bears so much reversed, uh, or the bulls lost so, lost control of this game so quickly that we actually completely er erased the entire day's rally attempt and closed below the, pr the previous like five days trading range, right? So we had a massive bearish engulfing candle, all right? And that tells you, and then next time we had follow through selling confirmation, and then it was down, right? But this was a failed attempt that, by the bulls to give it one more try, but they completely capitulated. Are you guys starting to see how this works? Look at the look at the price action through the lens of investor psychology, all right? So let's, you know what? I'm gonna just skip right through through the examples here. Uh, and then we didn't go to live examples, so you, so you guys see them not just chair picking examples here. I want I want to then have you guys give me some 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 examples 
Um, let's quickly go through the big picture, though. This is really important. The last thing I want—I need you guys to write this down. All right, three steps to the trade. This is really, really important, and we'll look at all the the, the live examples. So, step one. What's really important is that we understand the big picture. There's a lot of dudes out there trying to sell you something from a tra trading device or a trading indicator, or whatever, and they tell you you don't have to look, you don't understand the big picture of the market. It's total BS. Those those guys have never actually worked and actually managed money. I'll tell you what's important. You have to have understand understanding of the big picture, and most of that has to do with monetary policy and economic cyclicality. Where are we in the in the monetary policy cycle, and where are we in economic cycle? Very simple stuff. You don't have to read the Wall Street Journal all day long, but have an idea where we are, right? So like right now, we are basically in at the beginning of what could be through a, a five-year lens, the beginning of a tightening cycle. I don't think we're going to tighten much much more anytime soon, but that's essentially where we are. But we're also very late in a, bull, in a cyclical bull market, right? That's important to understand. Now, in fact, we're in a, we're in a cyclical bear market, to be really honest with you. Um, step number two, once you understand where we are in the big picture, step number two, and again, please write this down, you have got to trade in the direction of the broader trend for the most part. Doesn't mean you can't do some, some counter trend stuff, but for the most part, going in the direction of your intermediate term trend, your medium term trend is where your money is made. Any good hedge fund manager worth their money will tell you that, and that's just the bottom line. Step three, you then start looking um, for these strong bullish and bearish reversals through the lens of investor psychology, like I just showed you, I'm gonna show you a ton of example in just a minute. Um, to, to actually then look for the trade setups. And by the way, you can work your way through through step one, uh, through step three. So you can look, if you find a good bearish and bullish reversal, make sure you then go back to step two, make sure it more or less isn't the direction of the intermediate term trend, and that it, that, that, that intermediate term trend is indeed um, in, in, in conjunction with where we are in the big picture from a non-monetary policy perspective and an economic cyclical perspective. I hope you've written this, this down, guys. Maybe take a picture on your phone of this slide if you want, but this is really, really, really important. All right, and then I'm just I'm not just spewing stuff at you here that I'm just making up that I made up yesterday on the or this morning on the ski slopes. This is actually what matters. Okay. Now, let's go through and look at all those th those three charts I just gave you guys and look at them on a little bit of a bigger picture sense so you, you see what I'm, how this all ties together. This, again, is the chart of the S&P 500. The, the little snippet I showed you guys before um, was right here. It was the, the October 2014 uh, sell-off. Now, when we had that sell-off and we had that strong bullish reversal, look where that sell-off took place. It came right as a retest of the 2011 bull trend. Right, so at the time, the broad market structure was still very supportive. The Fed was still was still basically in easing mode. The the bull, cyclical bull market was still intact, um, although late in a cycle. But all of it, everything on that bullish reversal was telling us to buy. Right, not just the bullish reversal, not just the, the bearish washout, i.e. The, the what we saw through the lens of investor psychology, um, but also it's being supported by step step one and step two. Okay, very simple. The KBW Bank Index. Again, this chart I showed you guys before was from October of 2015. Okay, so just before. What happened here is that the market actually bounced into uh, into this uh, one and a half year support line, right? So, uh, and at the time, the Fed was 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 scaring people into basically that they're tightening, and that was going to be good for banks. So when all that took place here, and we had that visual representation of a of the bears exhausting themselves, it was a no-brainer to buy. So again, step one, step two, step three. Step one, this this uh, where we came in here was very supportive by the Fed. We were in a cyclical. Um, we're still in, in in a in a in a market where the Fed was supportive. Then the the trend, of course, in this case was higher because of that. And then step three, we had the bull reversal based on the strong bullish candlestick that I showed you guys before. Again, through the lens of investor psychology. All right, guys, let's plow through this on the GLD. This is the example, again, I showed you guys before, all right? This is the GLD. Before I showed you guys the bearish reversal that took place. That bearish reversal took place right on a multi-year downtrend line, all right? So what do we have? We had step one, the, the broad market structure was still basically um, was still basically scaring people out of owning uh, these sort of safe safe haven uh, assets, at least for the intermediate term, um, and so the trend, the trend remained lower. And when we had that bearish reversal take place right on a multi-year uh, resistance line, it was a no-brainer 
to go and actually I short the GLD or buy puts in the GLD, which would have been even better because implied volatility was was that had come in. So these are just no brainers. Again, look at the market, guys, through the lens of investment psychology. Are you guys starting to see how important this investment psychology stuff is? Good. You guys are saying yes. That's great. All right. Um, so let's. I want to go through and and just quickly give you guys an option trading setup, and then I want to take. Um, I, I want. I want to make sure you guys understand. You know, the power of the power of an option strategy that I use uh, on a on a on a on a monthly basis. And what this is basically is all about understanding that the highest probability of making money in the options market is when you lean into extreme greed or fear, all right? And the best thing to do is sell out of the money call spreads, uh, far out of the money call spreads, when a so-called cult stock, like a Tesla at the time, um, or an Amazon.com goes, takes a, a, a steep slope vertical, all right? Multi-year trends that go vertical, like look at Amazon.com, look what happened to Amazon.com, and I'll show you guys this, this in, just one in just a second here as we look at the bearish reversals. Look at Amazon.com. That there was a wonderful opportunity last year and continues to be to sell out of the money uh, call spreads against Amazon.com when and when last year when the stock went vertical. What happens is, and I don't have time enough enough time to go through all the dynamics of this, but what happens is implied volatility actually remains very high. And when these when these cold stocks go vertical, because the smart money understands there's a lot of risk of the stock being reverting lower, and that allows you as a seller of options to go in and actually sell hugely juicy premium, like 20, 30 plus percent out of the money uh, options or call spreads for, for wonderful premium that you get to keep and you do it on a monthly basis and you have the most wonderful income strategy. But you gotta make sure you lean against stocks that have given you a confirmed bearish reversals after a massively uh, sharp uh, um, move higher that, that basically took, took the, the, the chart vertical. That's extremely important, all right? Now, I wanna take some, um, actually let's go through this, just a quick summary. Candlesticks uh, show investor footprints and emotions, so what we need to have is a straightforward and a repeatable process, because that's the key to consistent profits as a trader and investor. The three-pronged process that I'm, that I'm telling you guys is, you have got to understand the broader structure, structure of the market, and make sure you trade in the general trend of that, and then use the one, two, three step reversals that I showed you guys, and then that we're gonna look at more here just right now, okay? now. Uh, let's go through some live examples. I'm gonna take just, if you guys have two stocks you want me to go through and look for those bullish and bearish reversals, I'd be happy to do that. Let me just quickly show you guys uh, what just, just took place uh, in the S&P 500 just over the past few weeks, right? So, I mean, we can look at all these bullish reversals uh, as much as you want, but let's just look at what's happened so far this year. Now, keep in mind that we are in a, in, a, in, a, in my opinion, we're in a cyclical bear market, so technically we need to really look for, for bearish reversals, but nonetheless, I'll show you the bullish reversals because most people have, tend to have an easier time understanding this. Look what happened here mid-January. We had a real waterfall sell-off into mid-January, and what happened here? On the 20th of January, the bears really tried to push it down one more time, quickly reversed higher in intraday basis. The bears really, really washed out. The next step, you had a follow-through buying day, and then we had, it was good for a trade. Now, if you remain in this trade, in this case, the, the, the trade's actually still good because we had the same thing happen again just uh, on the, uh, the 11th of February, right? We had, again, a bearish, this is a, a, a different variety of this, and you, you, I'll, I'll show you how you can learn this in just a minute. Uh, but we had, a, again, bearish exhaustion followed by an up gap and, and rally day and it was off to the races. All right, now, yes, so Mark is saying we're at the end of extreme buying. Yes, we are in a cyclical bear market, in my opinion, which means you have to look for bearish reversals as a trending strategy, right? But I wanna show you guys the bullish example just so you, you guys understand what I just, uh, what I was looking at. Now, um, let's look at just two stocks. Um, uh, Priceline. Um, someone's saying TLT. TLT is very, very difficult to, to, to do technical analysis on. You, got, you have to do the technical analysis on um, on the actual bond market itself. But let, let's look at price line, all right? So we can look at price line here, uh, right here, okay? So what happened? Again, look at, guys, look at it through the lens of investor psychology. So price line here in, um, in just a, actually just a, a, a week or so ago had a real dump lower, right? And what happened? We had 
a market that gapped lower on this on this day, which was the uh, 8th of February, and then it tried really hard the next day to push even lower. Look at that. It really, really tried hard on the 9th of February to push lower. It failed to do so. It didn't quite give us a complete bullish reversal, but the very next day gapped up higher and also right back above previous support, and it was off to the races. Again, guys, look at it through the lens of investor psychology. What happens is if you look at it, if you look at it through price, you will never be able to actually um, – we will never be able to actually – Stick to, 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 your, to your guns as much as, as you would if you look at it through the lens of investor psychology. What happens is that you look at this look at this down gap on the um, 8th of February, and and some. But by the way, I'm not cherry picking this. Someone just typed in price line. Okay, so just make sure I'm not I'm not making this stuff up. This is what happened. The, the market gap lower. It gave us exhaustion selling. The bears completely lost control of the ball. Gapped higher, and it was off to the races. All right, so. This is just really important to understand. So let's look at one more stock uh, here, and then we'll we'll do some other things here. Um, yeah, we can look at Guild. It doesn't really matter, whatever. So Guild again. You know, why don't we just look? Why don't we just look here? Let's let's look at a market that's actually already in a bear market. Okay. Um, just to, get, to give you guys some context, because we are in a bear market, I want to show you guys how this works in bear markets, because you, you, you're going to have to, in my opinion, continue to short stocks here over the next six months. Okay, so make sure you, you short them on on uh, on bounces, right? But you need to see where where the bulls get exhausted, and we have not yet seen the bulls get exhausted through the lens of price of price action, right? Okay, so look what happened. Um, the, the market here clearly reversed. Let, let's look at bearish reversal number one that took place in Nike on the 23rd of December. That's right here. Okay, you guys see this? What happened on this day? The market rallied really, really strongly intraday. The bulls saw something that they wanted to push this market. They failed so badly that on an intraday basis, they completely reversed all the gains, all the gains, and actually closed quite a bit lower. Uh, than the pre than than on on the day and fully engulfed like four or five previous trading days. It was followed by follow through selling and it was off to the races lower. Then again the market rallied and it came into resistance here at um, the 50-day moving average, which is this excuse me this um yellow line. We also had confluence resistance, um, which is something uh, I'll I'll teach teach you guys how you how you guys can learn this in just a second. And then you can see the market exhausted and, and gapped lower on this on this very next day, right? So the market here for two days in a row tried to tried to push above resistance at the 50-day and, and horizontal resistance, then gapped lower and it was lower from there. Okay, you guys starting to see how this has come together? This is this is so powerful, guys. So let's do this. If you guys want to learn more on this, I would like to invite you guys to my Ultimate Candlestick Bootcamp where you guys can uh, learn this institutional three-prong trading approach. It's all about a low-stress, high probability of swing trading method where you can nail reversals by correctly reading investor sentiments and emotions. That's what this is all about, okay? Now, we're going to go through much more examples here, and this includes a 30-page course guide as a bonus. What the course is is a 11 um, – it, it's an 11-part recorded video series that I just recorded a couple of months ago, um, and it includes a 30-page course guide. Uh, it goes through all the details. You can go and pick this up at www.thestudytrader.com slash now. It's a one-time fee, just 97 bucks, okay? Um, I don't know if, Travis, if you could put in the link in the, in the question in the chat box, that'd be great. Um, you're going to learn all about this. You're going to learn all about the bullish and bearish reversals. And it does include a 30-day money-back guarantee. If for some reason you um, don't like this, uh, by all means, uh, you know I don't want you 97 bucks. But uh, I would urge you, if you want to learn how to correctly look at the market through the lens of investor psychology, um, go ahead and, and 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 take a look at this course. It's going to teach you all these things for just 97 bucks. www.thestudytrader.com/now. Now, just as an FYI, when you go to that link. I think it comes at, up as one of the, the name of the product is Surge's Pro Trading Course. It's the same thing. I just changed the name recently. Okay. Now let's go through a little bit more about what this actually means. Um, 
who is this course not for? It's probably not for someone who can't be patient and disciplined. It's probably not for someone who wants me to spoon feed them trades, uh, because what we want to do is we want to teach you how to fish, right? And not get, hand you a fish, because that's not really how you survive over the long term. I wasn't up here in the Swiss Alps running my business uh, on a two-week vacation in, in the chalet if if this was uh, if this was something that uh, that didn't work. So. Uh, this course very much is for people that want to be able to make their own decisions and really, really learn how the pros do this. Look at the market through investor psychology, guys. It's it's just, just you know, it's just how it is. So you know, I I can't tell you how powerful uh, this stuff is. Uh, it's for traders that want to be able to really understand the market. They want to reach financial independence by understanding how the markets work. It's for a disciplined self starter, so you can that want to follow a three pronged. Uh, rules-based trading approach. Francis is asking, do you include options? Yes, you can absolutely do this with options. That's in fact, I do that most of the time. Okay. Um, Mark is asking, do we have unlimited access to the course? Yes, 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 yes. This is a one-time fee for 97 bucks. www.thestandardtrader.com/now. I'm going to teach you guys all about these unbelievably strong bullish and bearish reversals. I can tell you, um, I, you know, I bought very heavily on the 20th. Uh, actually, on the 21st of January, and we again bought uh, on the, 20, the 12th of February, just based on these reversal signals. Again, we are in a technical bear market, so I'm going to be much more aggressive on the short side. But if you guys understand to how to look at the market through the lens of investor psychology, using, uh, among other things, tools like the candlesticks I just showed you, you guys are going to be re real good shape in this bear market. All right, a couple more things. Uh, Brian Rakwalski over at the RJ Brian Fixed Income Group had this to say about the state of trader. He said that it provides in-depth technical analysis unseen in other sites. Um, and the thorough explanations on the intricacies of technical investing have made me a better investor and trader. And you know, Brian's actually already a pro. It's been wonderful to see how he has been able to uh, uh, profit from this course. And, and it's literally benefited him and his clients dramatically. Uh, Maybe one more thing here. Uh, again, what, what what the course includes is its social three pound trading approach. You're going to learn all variations of the bullish and bearish reversals, how to use the candlesticks to trade both in the direction of the trend and against it. You're not going to have to learn a thousand candlesticks because, like honestly, most of them aren't worthy, and most of, most of them are the same, and many of them are basically useless. Okay. Um, now. Um, Paul is asking, what tool do you use for your charts? This is eSignal that I showed you. Um, you, can, you guys are going to learn all about um, rocket launch, gravity, the gravity pull setups, um, multi-time frame analysis, and confluence zones. It's all part of this, all in this course. It's just 97 bucks, guys. www.thestatetrader.com/now. Learn to look at the market through the lens of investor psychology, guys. I can't tell you how important that is, and how few people do it. That's why most. That's one of the main reasons most people don't make money, or not as much as they wish. You guys are also going to learn about sideways channel breakouts, wedge or flag uh, pattern breakouts. But I'm going to teach you guys this stuff in a way that actually works, as opposed to some academic that wrote a book on it and doesn't actually manage money. Because I'm going to teach you guys how this actually is being used, and the way we I used it at J.P. Morgan, the way I used it at the hedge funds, and the way I'm using it now to manage money. I'm going to teach you guys how to use uh, resistance and support lines, moving averages, Fibonacci retracements, all those things, all through the lens of investment psychology to increase the likelihood of these bullish and bearish reversals even more that I just showed you guys. Um, more questions. What time frames do I trade in? I mostly trade in multi-day to multi-week, but this works in any time frame. Okay, so you also can, by the way, you also can learn about where to set your stops, at risk management strategy, the mental aspect of trading, and um, and money management. Okay, so all that's included. Let's quickly go through one couple more things. And I know Travis, I think I'm just about out of time. A couple more questions. Yes. So Paul is asking, can you only do this end of day charts? So here it is, Paul. Um, Cornelius is saying he wants a recording. Yes, this is going to be rec it's it's being recorded. And by the way, this also works in forex. I know Theo is asking, does this work in forex? Yes, it works in forex. Um, it's it's an 11 part video series. Again, it's just 97 bucks, guys. And basic a one time fee. 11 part video series. Each video is like 15 to 30 minutes long. So it's it's very, fairly extensive, but it's very straightforward. Okay, and I just recorded it again. Does it work on NFT charts? Yes, it works on daily charts. Um, 
Paul, Paul, the thing is, the best probability, um, the best probability in, in active investing and trading, the best way to make money is to capture the intermediate term trends. Okay, let's let me just show you. Let's go back to the Nike example, just because it's a, it's a really visually obvious one. The money is. I'm gonna say this because it's honestly true. Money is not over time. Money is not made day trading. You're gonna make money capturing intermediate term trends. If you would have caught 50% of this bearish reversal in Nike, just just this move, just this move from here into into here, you would have made 8% as an absolute no. At least let's say let's just to be let's say let's say you made six percent on that trade. That is the easiest money you can make, and it's really where the money is in the intermediate term. Trend. Look at the GLD, right? That trade I showed you guys before, that bearish reversal here, that's an intermediate term trend. You could have easily made a lot of money. And the bullish reversal here, which I, don't, I think I'm out of time here, by the way. Um, how do you know to stay in that downtrend? Paul, take the course. I'm out of time. <laughs> 97 bucks, www.thestudytrader.com slash now.